A U.S. soldier thought to be behind the largest lead leak of state secrets in U.S. history is set to go on trial. Bradley Manning has spent almost two years in prison waiting for the official process against him to begin. Among the documents claimed to have been released by him was video footage showing U.S. forces firing on unarmed Iraqi civilians. Critics say the trial is part of a system that hides alleged crimes and punishes those who speak out. RT's Christine Frizzau reports. One, two, one, two, three. Bradley Manning must be free. Nearly two years in waiting, much of it in solitary confinement, and private first class Bradley Manning's trial is finally set to begin. Free Bradley Manning! Free Bradley Manning! Among the 22 charges filed against him, aiding the enemy, violating the Espionage Act, and illegally transferring classified data to an unauthorized source, WikiLeaks. Come on, fire! Part of that was this video, showing U.S. Army pilots killing unarmed civilians, including two Reuters employees, a video that had been classified by the U.S. military. Though the Government Accountability Project's Jessalyn Radak said it never should have been. You can't also cannot go around classifying criminal activity. That is not proper classification. And I haven't heard a single person claim that what the collateral murder video showed was not war crimes. A sentiment Manning seems to agree with. In an online chat conversation, he said he hoped his putting the information out there would prompt worldwide discussion, that he wants people to see the truth. A short time later, Bradley Manning was arrested, in the process becoming one of the clearest symbols to date of a new set of standards, a system that now works against those who report wrongdoing and protects those doing the wrong, quite often in the name of national security. The pendulum right now is still very much a post 9-11 time of national hysteria and limited civil rights and liberties. And she would know. Radak was the Justice Department whistleblower in the case of the so-called American Taliban, John Walker Lind. I had advised not to interrogate him without an attorney and not to torture him. And when I blew the whistle, I ended up being put under criminal investigation, referred to the state bars in which I'm licensed as a lawyer and put on the no-fly list. But it wasn't always this way. In 2002, the Time Magazine Person of the Year was the whistleblowers. And although the government tried to have him put away for life, Daniel Ellsberg was hailed as a hero by the public for leaking information that became known as the Pentagon Papers, classified documents he helped author that revealed what was actually happening in Vietnam. Ellsberg, what he revealed to the public is what the public should have known from the government itself. Important knowledge. Important knowledge now often stifled, both on and off the battlefield. In the military, if a woman is sexually assaulted or abused or even raped, she's supposed to go through the chain of command, which will actually harm her instead of helping her. Outside of the military, policies are also being drawn up to protect corporations. The so-called Whistleblower Improvement Act, if passed, would actually harm whistleblowers, requiring them to report misconduct to their employer first before going to any regulatory agencies. It would also remove any incentives to do so. Our government and um, the businesses are so intricately linked, it's hard to tell them apart. Both now working harder than ever to keep their secrets out of the public eye. In Washington, Christine Frizzau, RT.